Hello Internet! Today I have this brand new 4090 came in for repair. According to its owner, it was purchased at some sort of a resale place with no warranty, so here it is, dead before its first game. So let's do what everybody does when they suspect their GPU is dead, is to plug it in and see what happens. It looks like the fan blow to the max and there's no picture. What could cause this brand new 4090 to behave like this? I don't know. So today we're going to find out. And thanks to NVIDIA, Founders Editions require the minimum amount of tools, so let's get on with that. Ok, card is taken apart, let's check for short circuits in the key areas. Everything looks good, so I'm going to power the card and see if we have all the required voltages. It looks like all voltage is present, so next step to take is to look at the wave signal and make sure that all power stages are active. And as you can see, all power stages work. Not finding anything wrong. I thought to look under a microscope, maybe it's got a crack. You know, the crack at the slot where all these 4090s crack all the time. Uh, but I couldn't find any crack anywhere, so everything's looking brand new. The one thing I suspect is the core itself. But before I get into that, I want to do more tests. One is to check the oscillator and see if it generates 27 MHz and check the BIOS chip for activity. There are four pads for the oscillator. Two are ground, and two go under the core, either straight under or through a zero ohm resistor. Those two pads I'm interested in, and as you can see, there's absolutely nothing on either of them, which could mean that the core is dead, or the connection is broken somewhere along the way. One way to find out is to lift the core and inspect.
I don't know exactly what that thing was. Uh, it looked like it had wings, and I think we've seen enough today. So let's uh, check for resistances and verify data lines. Next, I'll power the card, and it looks like we have all the voltages. Now back at the oscillator, and we now have a signal as expected. I also noticed that something is getting very hot. And upon checking resistance one more time, it looks like whatever this thing is, it pulls 5 volt down the ground to about 100 ohms. So let's remove this component and see if the resistance normalizes. As you can see, we now have 7K. All that's left to do is to identify this component, wait for the part to arrive, and solder it back on. At which point all of that was already done, and as you can see the card works, and the repair is done. Thank you for watching. If you need a repair, don't hesitate to contact me by following the link in the description. Goodbye.